guys welcome back hi I'm gonna do a spin pull for you and I'm gonna use my split cup it's got one two three four compartments and I thought I'd use these colors here I've got a sort of a, a light teal a copper um, like a orangey yellow color and a burnt sienna so those are my colors and my background is a dark teal rather than the black um, should I add a little bit of black I was thinking maybe add a oh, go away fly I might add a tiny bit of a black just so it's darker than that one uh, they're all the Montmartre colors these ones so the teal there is the phthalo blue mixed equal parts with the phthalo green so that's that one but I think I will just get a tiny bit of black and I just decant them into smaller bottles so it's easier for me to just get a little bit out um, yeah I didn't want to have a black background I thought oh but I don't want it's just a little bit like that see how that goes because I'm concerned about having the black and this yellowy color you know how they go green but um, I have got tealy greens in here anyway in this color scheme today so it should be okay now my pouring medium today I'll just give this a good stir oh look at that oh that's really pretty I like that so it's not black it's not teal it's a really dark teal which is gorgeous just so that's there okay now pouring medium is that glue fertile water in here in my bottle I've got 400 grams of glue uh, Elmer's glue all that is 400 grams of the Aussie flow troll and 200 grams of water if you're in the US and you've got the US flow troll you might want to drop that to 300 um, because the US flow troll is much thicker. Right, um, so I've told you about the colours. This copper here is this one, the Extreme Sheen by Deco Art Copper. So I put the whole bottle, which is 60 or well, 59 mil, so I think it's about 60 grams, and I've mixed that with 40 grams of pouring medium, so it's not equal amounts because what's in here is much thinner than what's in there so you can't mix them equally so these ones are one to one with the pouring medium and this one as I said is 40 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of the paint so I'm gonna layer my cup first and then I'm gonna do my <laughs> my top coat my base coat usually I do the base coat first and then I've got nowhere to put this down so I'm gonna do it the right way today so this is a 40 centimeter canvas it is a 16 inch square and um, I don't need a lot of paint for this I need 400 grams so um, this this cup here holds more than 400 grams so they're not going to be full But um, if you're doing a bigger canvas, then, you know, it's great. You, you can add more paint, I guess. Um, I've got a, a canvas down there that I want to show you too. So this is thicker. Always, always, always mix your metallic paints thicker than your other paints. Otherwise, they will just fall through to the back. You won't see them. They have to be thicker. And you can feel the consistency of it is thicker too. It leaves a much bigger mound on the surface. And I want the copper next to my teal. That's why I'm putting them next to each other. Oh, there's a fly. I'll tell you what, the flies are so bad at the moment. You know, it's, it's getting hot weather. I've got dogs. I've got birds. They attract flies. Nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're driving me crazy. <laughs> they're everywhere. Now, I didn't want to put the burnt, what did I get? Was it, what did I say? It was burnt sienna, raw sienna. Oh, I get the two mixed up all the time, the burnt sienna and the raw sienna. What's the difference? One's darker. Anyway, I didn't want to put it next to the copper because they're both brownie tones. So I'm putting the 
this sort of yellowy tone next to it. It's basically just yellow and orange mixed together because I didn't want bright orange and I didn't want bright yellow. So I just thought oh, I'll mix the two together until I get a nicer, more subdued sort of a colour that's not too bright and in your base. And then the brown. But leaves a mound, I don't know if you can see, leaves a mound. Let's pour that in. So the colours that are on the outside tend to be a little bit more prominent, I think. So the teal and the brown, I think, will be more prominent, but we'll see. I was going to layer like a couple of colours in each compartment, but then I thought, no, I don't really want them to mix too much. I've done that before where I put like three colours in each compartment and it and mixed a little bit too much and I couldn't really see see the colours properly. Let's just clean these gloves off. Alright, so that's that one. Go away fly. Gosh. Right, I'll show you this canvas. I did this a little while ago, but I don't know that I've actually shown it to you. It was a the spin. Um, spin um, ring pour. Really pretty. Dried exactly the same as when I left it. I'm going to have to swap this fly. Get here. Come here, fly. Come here and die. Come here. Where are you? I dare you to land on my canvas. Come back. Oh, now he's gone. Never comes back when you want them to, do they? Come back here. It's driving me crazy. All right. I'll put the swatter down next to me. If he comes near me, bam! All right, let's pour this out. So your base coat needs to be thinner than your colours. As I said, the colours are mixed one to one, one part pouring medium, one part paint. Your base colour needs to be thinner. It's two parts pouring medium to one part paint. If it's the same thickness, your colours aren't going to slide around on it properly. Okie dokes. Um, I should save a little bit of that. I always need to save a little bit for my corners that I miss when I, after I've finished <laughs> spinning. I always forget. Right, save a bit for your corners. Right. Um, now, will I spin this or will I? Oh, that's the other thing. See, I've just got my cake turntable under there. That I got from eBay. It's a metal one. And I've got my tin foil over the top. I've got push pins under here. I can't show you now. So this canvas basically just sits inside. It just sits on top like that. So it's not going to move very much at all. Um, let's use this. Let's just spread it with this. I've got some black in there still. I haven't mixed it properly. I was in a hurry. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, whether I just want to do a ring pour and then I thought maybe two ring pours would be quite nice and have a little bit of interest how they kind of flow into each other. I think what I'll do is I'll just do the one for now and I'll see how the colours behave together and what they look like and then I can do another one with maybe do two rings, like move them around while I'm turning the canvas um, and just see see how that turns out because that might be pretty hey rather than just one but um, I really like the dark sort of tealy colors with copper see now he's back fly he's just playing with me he's teasing me he knows I can't do anything because my hands are full he's teasing me all right there we go I'll pop that there let's give this a bit of a spin just to smooth everything out Oh, the other thing, when I stop my canvas and it goes bang, 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 like when it goes bang, 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 like it stops like that and bangs against your, your fingers, if you've got nice circles and it goes bang, 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 you're going to get these ridges in your lines. So it's really tricky. Maybe put your hand underneath and just stop it really slowly. Don't stop it on the corner because it's going to go bang, bang, bang. Either stop it on the bottom like that where you're not going to jar your 
pretty circles or don't spin it so hard and just let it stop on its own. I learnt that the hard way. I did a really pretty pour and I went bang like this. <laughs> I can't show you now. But um, yeah, I kind of stopped it like that and it was, every time I, it hit my hand, it was jarring the lines. And um, yeah, I lost my nice beautiful ring. So like that, don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Right, enough of that. But look, it's an important little lesson and I learned that the hard way. So I'm happy to share my wisdom with you that I've learned the hard way. All right, look, look at this, grubby, grubby, grubby. All right, I think my sides are covered. I think my sides are covered. I can't really tell from behind there, are they? Yeah, oh, pretty good, they're pretty good. Pretty good. All right, let me wipe my hands again. And uh, we'll start we'll start pouring. So normally, like I'm I'm right-handed, but for some reason I pour and make like a circle in an anti-clockwise motion. Like I've seen people at work when they when they're doing a circle around something, they go like a clockwork clockwise to do a circle. I go anti-clockwise to make a circle. What do you guys do? Do you go anti-clockwise or do you go clockwise when you're circling something? I don't know. All right, I'm gonna stand on the side here so that you can see the paint coming out. Oh, we're still taping. Yep. So I'm going to pour, as I normally do, in a anti-clockwise motion. And then because I'm going anti-clockwise, I need to turn the canvas in a clockwise motion so they're opposite each other right so that's what we're doing are you ready let's get everything up to the the top all right here we go wish me luck get nice and close <clears throat> let me try and get little thin lines get nice and close otherwise you're um, your circles will be wobbly. If you get nice and close to the canvas, you can go nice round tight circles like this. Concentrating. Yeah, so if, you, if your hand or if your cup is too high up, as the paint drops down, it kind of goes squiggly. So it's nicer just to do this and you get nice, nice ribbon, nice thick ribbon folding over onto itself. It takes a little while for all that paint to come out. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. It takes quite a while. Now I'm trying not to move my hand. So it's staying in the same place. I'm just moving the, the canvas. Although your hand tends to move a little bit, it does. spinning the canvas like at different speeds like if you turn it really slowly or if you turn it quick it also gives you a different look it's actually harder than it looks it's like you know that thing where you have to pat your head and rub, rub your stomach at the same time it's like that like it's it's not that easy to do two things at once you're concentrating on tipping the cup pouring it going in circles spinning the canvas trying to talk to you so as we get a little bit closer to the end I'm just going to support it with my other hand Because by this time my arm starts getting quite sore, my shoulder, 
I'm just going to support my support the cup so it doesn't go shaky. And tip it all the way over. It's up to you whether you want to sort of keep spinning or not. I'm not going to with this one. I'm just going to keep going in the the circles. I don't know if you can actually see my dark teal. I didn't do I didn't really do the shape where I moved it around so that you can see the background colour. I didn't actually do that, so I don't know if you'll see it or not. All right, catch your drip. Oh, all right. Phew. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to see my dark my background colour, which is a shame. And sometimes I do like a travelling, it sort of travels more. Um, if you did make a little mistake, you can just do a twirl like that. Sometimes the last little bit just leaves a blob. Okay, um, well that's a bit of a shame. I was hoping to have some of the other colour coming through next time. Maybe I can like move it around a little bit so that this darker colour comes comes through. Um, anyway, let's let's just spin it. I'll give it a little spin. Yeah, I'm not going to see any of that teal. That's a shame, isn't it? A lovely dark teal. All right, so we'll let it come to its stop on its own. So it's a bit hard for me to catch the bottom somewhere because I'm probably going to hit the push pins and that's where it jars. Nope, oh, like that. <laughs> oh, what a shame I'm missing, losing all my my teal. That's a shame. All right, uh, let's go again. Spin, spin, spin. I'm quite happy for that center piece to be off center a little bit. Getting sprayed with paint. Yeah, I'm not really impressed with these colors, I must say. I really would have liked my darker teal to be in here. Hmm. Okay, and there's a few little blobs of paint that um, haven't been mixed in. You know what, I've been swiping recently, you know, doing the tree swipes. I wonder what that would look like if I swiped over that. Because I don't really, it's not really what I was after. I really wanted that teal to shine through. Let me just get um, a couple of paint chip cards and I'm going to swipe this baby and that one so I've got my paint chip cards and I need some paper towel just to wipe them on now I think it might be nice to keep this hey so Maybe if we keep that, put it there, and then I can do the tree like around there, sort of keep that area, because I quite like that. Let me just grab some bits of paper towel, and then I can use that to clean my little paint chip cards off. Right, I wonder if it'll work with this technique. Well, it should. Shouldn't, shouldn't be any reason why it wouldn't work. Hey, so the main trunk of the tree I'll use with this thicker one, and I'm going to sort of follow, follow that, follow that line, kind of like that. Hmm, like that, but then up, and then a branch over there. I think. Okay, but I'm going to have to hold this because it's going to move, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> I was expecting this darker colour to come out from underneath, but it didn't really. Let's try again. It's going to be a bit harder this time. There we go. And just get off me, fly. Create that sort of trunk look. 
down here like so because the trunk's wider isn't it and then it goes up so now let's do a branch I like the blue we'll leave the blue let's go into some of this here with this oh this is good look I can do this oh, look at that um, oh, let's pick this up here a little just I'm going to use the point and just drag a little bit of color through it and then widen it and we'll come through about here somewhere okay like so it just follows that because I like that bit of blue there it's like the the sky behind it now I'm going to use the smaller one and let's see if we can get some little branches coming off hey it's a little bit muddy like the, it's a bit thin like you know it's probably a bit thin for this particular technique get some of the thinner ones I'm going to use the end the very edge of my little car just to get some real little thin ones happening little branches like so okay now I wouldn't mind some of this darker color. I'm just going to put that there. See, it comes in handy. And I want to just swipe that darker one through there onto my branch if I can. Oops, it didn't go very far. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of shading so you know when you're looking at a tree sometimes the branches come off in front sometimes they come off behind um, this one's obviously coming off at the front if you do one that starts say here it's going to come off um, behind like so that gives you a different look and that one's coming off in front so that looks nice there We shouldn't have done that one. <laughs> Looks more like a cactus. I used to draw cacti when I was younger. I used to draw Mexican scenes with chalk. Looks like a dolphin. All right, now this one here needs something. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more of this teal here and then bring this oops, a little bit wider I think go away fly having a play guys just having a play look if you don't like your painting you know you can try and save it why not I reckon I really like this dark down here I'm gonna put a little bit more down the bottom here a bit of shadowing there I really like that And I think it needs a little bit through here as well. A little bit of shadowing. And then when these two branches meet, it would also cause 
you know, a bit of a shadow from the from the sun. So let's pop a shadow line in there as well. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. That's it from my perspective, my point of view. Um, I kind of like to give it a few little balloon dips, but I'm a bit chicken. I think it's I think it's got enough because it's got the the swirl there. So I think it's got enough. If anything, I'm just going to um, play with a little bit more colour. bit more sort of variegation but um, I don't think we need a lot more it would like we don't need any more branches or anything like that I think that's enough whoops what am I doing what am I doing what am I doing I'm trying to add a little bit more color in here like that I really like this dark shadowing just here mm, no I won't put any more on okay I think I think that's actually no over here the see this over here is quite muddy over here I think we need a little bit more color here I'm gonna be careful not to drip that's all a bit more of the darker colour there. Like so. Alright, I think that will be it. Um, yeah, I mean it's not it's not ideal. These these colours are mixed up thinner than what I did with um my other tree paws. I can take my gloves off and show you the other one that I did. Uh, when did I do it? A few days ago. I'll show you. It was with a different, different, total different paint. Um, a total different look. That's it there. Yeah, it's dry now. Uh, but yeah, very different. And there's that one as well. I'm, I'm enjoying doing these. It's something a little bit more artistic, a little bit more creative. If I had some more yellow left, <clears throat> I'd like to put more like yellow through, through there. But in saying that, there's a lot of this yellowy tone going on here. So I guess the tree being more on the green side is probably a better idea, hey? Mm. All right, do you want to come down for a little close up? Let me just face it back towards me and um, I'll get you down. <laughs> so that was absolutely nothing like what I was planning on doing for you today. I'll turn my lights off. But um, these things happen, you know, and that's okay. If you're not happy with something, by all means, change it. A little whirlwind happening behind it isn't it and the tree's been sucked in it's leaning over hanging on for dear life trying not to get pulled in and as it swirls around and around <laughs> now I'm just being silly <laughs> oh, but I do like how I've got this darker area down here it adds a little bit of depth and a little bit of shadowing and then see how Oh, where is it under here see under there it's got a little bit of darkness because that's the underside of the branch and it's going to be in shadows anyway so when you're looking at doing this sort of thing think about where your shadows are going to be you know they're going to be on the underside of the branches um so try it try for that as well but i really like it what do you think <laughs> it's pretty i do like it 
All right, I'll leave it at that. I'm gonna go and sit down and have coffee. It's so hot today. I'm gonna to have an iced coffee, I think. But let me know what you think of this. Um, like when I when I did it, I thought, mm, you know, that didn't work. What can I do? And then I added a tree. I thought, okay, did it work? Did it not work? I really like it, and it's growing on me. The swirly tree. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much. All right. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.